Thank you for your presence. Thank you for coming. We honor you. Take your throne among us, we pray. And fathers, we talk about your desire for the house and for the change in character and nature so that we can minister in this final great gathering and revival. Would you witness to our heart that which is yours for us individually and then that which is, which, which if, if I could put it this way, Lord, which grouping you want us in? that we might be gathered together unto you. Gathered together under the door of your tabernacle. Ushering in your kingdom, we pray. In your precious name. Amen. Oh, thank God for his presence. Amen. I'm going to pick up on what Dr. Ed started and if you have trouble with what I say, blame it on him. Uh, but he started laying out the vision for CMC. Now God has had this house in transition for a while. And he has set her free to follow God. And I'm ever grateful for that. And one of the things that we have been talking about the last few weeks is the call on this house to be a healing house. Yeah. The first video I saw of this place was over in the old sanctuary and with Albert, I forget his last name. Lupus. Hmm? Lupus. 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 Net. Okay. He was only 92 or 3 when I met him. I mean, he's just a young fellow. But he was praying for the sick and seeing them healed in the old sanctuary. And in listening to different people talk about the history, there's a history of healing flowing from this house. We're about to redig the well. All right. So I want to talk about the four aspects and take us a little further than Dr. Ed had time to. And I'm warning you, I am a little longer winded than Dr. Ed. <laughs> All right? But I feel I have some to share with you and that God wants to impart something into our spirit. It, it's not just the words we speak. Jesus said, the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And I'm praying that God somehow imparts into your spirit what he put in me as I begin to look into this. So, the four aspects of the house are, i uh, probably not pronounce this right, Ruah HaKodesh, or the Holy Spirit. The Rama, a Rama house. A Rafa house, or a healing house. And the Rama house. And we're going to talk about each of those briefly, and I want to set you at ease we are going to go into them further as the time goes on. Okay? Because each of them are a teaching in their own. And something like the Holy Spirit is a vast teaching. But we want to learn how to yield to the Holy Spirit. How to share when He says share. And how to know that what we have is for that meaning. And we're going to teach some of that in the days to come begin to look at this. The vision, God in this hour is building or shaping and forming his body worldwide. The whole body of Christ is going through tra change and transition. That's a good thing, but it's not comfortable. Okay? So if you're feeling uncomfortable, it's okay. He is also shaping and forming the body of Christ regionally, citywide, and in local gatherings. I wish we could hear that. Some of you don't understand what you're going through. It's the hands-on work of God. And those online, do you hear that? It's the hands-on work of God that gives you what I call a dissatisfied satisfaction. It's not the church that is making you dissatisfied. 
because dissatisfaction is actually a form of hunger okay and we need to recognize that instead of blame pastor or whoever else gets in our way <laughs> your dissatisfaction comes from God himself and because if you were satisfied you wouldn't move ahead if you weren't hungry you wouldn't eat come on now each one is being fitted with a spiritual DNA that expresses the heart of the Father his character and his nature it's always been about Father God because Jesus was about Father God he said when you've seen me you've seen the Father and so folks we need to catch that what, what the world is looking for is the Father yeah. in a people his character his nature his life his peace his joy that emanates from a people that draw he said if I be lifted up I will draw. one day many years ago God said to me why are people not being drawn and I said the only conclusion that I can come to is you're not being lifted up Lord teach me how to lift him up so that people not that I have a magnetic personality but that the magnet of Jesus in me draws people to Jesus now in each gathering manifestation manifesting portions of his DNA are expressed and brought together and they will manifest the fullness of his character and nature he has said that to the principalities and powers he's going to be made known by the church not by the building but by the people the manifold you are called to be a manifestation of the manifold wisdom of God hallelujah that's exciting and scary all at the same time so let's look at what is the DNA of Christ the Messiah church now I've taken this from an article because Dr. Ed said, Bill, there are four aspects of our DNA. And I said, Lord, my memory of, of anatomy, and I've studied it fairly closely, and I'm still writing and studying on it, I don't remember a fourfold DNA. So guess, thank God for Google. <laughs> <laughs> and I Googled it, and this is where I found it. DNA usually forms the classic double helix shape of two strands wound around each other. That was what my memory said. So I wasn't having Alzheimer's. <laughs> While DNA can form some more exotic shapes in test tubes, few are seen in real living cells. However, four-stranded DNA known as G quadruplex has recently been seen forming naturally in human cells. First that which is Natural. then that which is Spiritual. okay so what we're talking about is not strange it may be strange to us but it's not strange to the maker okay now in new research published today in Nature Communications a team led by Imperial College London science, scientists have created new probes that can now that can see how G quadruplexes are interacting with other molecules inside and what are you? Living cells. Hallelujah! This could get exciting! So let's talk about our four strands of DNA that God wants to develop and mature in CMC the Roa HaKadosh is the presence and preeminence of the Holy Spirit of God okay he wants that in the house he wants us to let him lead us 
into knowing Him. Knowing Jesus. You know, there are times when I don't think I know Him at all. That's okay. As long as I don't run away from <coughs> knowing Him. Second of all, the rainbow word of God is part of the DNA of this house. This is applied, both applied logos and prophetic rhema in balance. One of the things that we notice in humanity worldwide is most of us are imbalanced. Some of us eat too much, some of us eat too little. Some of us think too much, some of us think too little. Oh, we better not go there. All right. But there's a balance that God wants to teach us. My cry for the last number of years since God began to talk to me about it, he's, uh, my cry has been, Lord, teach me balance. Your Holy Spirit came to lead me and guide me into all truth. That means there is a balance of truth that I don't know. And teach me in, to come into balance or lead me into balance of what you called me to so I'm not unbalanced. You know when a, a dryer or a washer is unbalanced, they rattle a lot? We'll just leave that one alone. The Rafa DNA strand represents I am the Lord that healed thee. That's one of the first strands that manifested here in CMC. That's why we're calling it forth. That's why we're redoing that well. And then there's the Rama house or the Rama strand of DNA. Rama, a city of refuge and center of the school of the prophets as well as a Levitical city. I'm going to go into some of that next week. Because I believe the basis of what God wants to do here is out of a city of refuge. Yeah, a safe place. Yeah, amen. 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 And we don't know how to be a safe place. Holy Spirit must lead us there. The Ruach HaKadosh. This is the Hebrew name used for the Holy Spirit of God. CMC is called to be a place where the Holy Spirit has the right to control the expression through the members, the ministry, and the flow of our gatherings. I was so blessed and refreshed by His presence here this morning. I'm so thankful that God prevailed on Marshall to come and lead us into the presence. No, let me go back there, deeper into the presence. Okay? Because as soon as we begin, the presence began to build. Through what Ellie had to say, through the blowing of the shofar, and through the release of the silver trumpet, and then through our human silver, silver trumpet. Thank God. But, but God wants to build a place where His presence is so strong that whoever comes on the property feels it. And where healing flows because they step on the property. Yes, yes. Where He is Lord and it's evident. Yes, he has a right to redirect the service anytime He wants to. Amen. Lord, show me how to facilitate that. Amen? Yes. It's a place where the gifts of the Spirit are welcome. It's a place where the ministry of the Holy Spirit through the fivefold ministry gifts is also welcome. We need both the gifts of the Spirit and the fivefold ministry functioning because we cannot come to the measure of the fullness of the stature of Christ without that function. That's why he put it there. It's our cry that through that moving and flowing of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is developed in the believer. Let me take a moment here to say I've seen all of this function without any work done in the people. Because they're all gifts. And how many know you don't give your child a gift because he's been good? You give it to him or her because it's their birthday. 
and you love them. If we be good fathers know how to give good gifts, how much more our Heavenly Father. So my gifting is no indication of my maturity. I don't care whether it's fivefold ministry gifting or one of the nine gifts. And the church has made them merit badges. God is delivering us from that. It's a house of balance between the Logos ministered by the Spirit and the Rhema of the now word ministered in teaching, preaching, and the prophetic. Do you like my little balance beam here? You'll see it a lot. Anywhere I'm teaching, you're going to see it a lot. If we ever set up a school, it's going to be on my desk at the front of the class. Okay? Why? Because God is crying out for balance in His body. What happens when your electric lights, I mean your electrolytes are out of balance? Okay? This includes the prophetic release by the gift of prophecy, the office or ministry of the prophet, the ministry of the seer, and the spirit of prophecy. Each of those are progressive developments of that uh, gifting. There are other releases of the rhema as well, but we need to expect God to do it and be open to the multitude of ways he wants to release the rhema of God. I think God is getting ready to do away with our boxes. Because we have had God in a box. Let me tell you what he said to me one day. I'm motoring along and enjoying it, and he said, don't put me in a box. Because if you put me in a box, it becomes your coffin, and I move on. I mean, no, we don't like dead things. Yeah. Amen? Okay. In Exodus 15, 26, and, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord, Jehovah, the Lord, that healeth thee. Now as I was going through this this morning, although I had this prepared, the Lord underlined to me what I underlined in the definition of Rapha House. I want to make you whole, not just heal you. Wow! See, that takes it beyond the body. That takes it into the soul and the spirit. You know, there were ten lepers that came. Right? Ten lepers? Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. The ones that showed themselves to the priest were healed. But the one who came back to give thanks was made whole. Yeah. That, means, that means that the ones that went to show themselves for the priest, the deterioration stopped. But the one that came back got everything back that he lost. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, watch it. I might get Pentecost for you. All right. God's call on this house is a house in which healing will flow for the spirit, soul, and body. Our, house, our heart will be to go beyond healing, which often arrests the sickness on all levels. Our goal is to be a place where God can make people whole. Amen. That's our goal. Who, like the leper, may have portions of their being eaten away in their spirit, soul, or body. And God restores those portions to wholeness so that there's no sign there was ever any loss. Yeah. Mentally, emotionally, restore wills to wholeness and spiritual wholeness. Yeah. Let's not settle for anything less. A Rama house. A Rama house is one that is, is at its foundation a city of refuge. 
The character and nature of the city is described extensively in Scripture. We're going to go into this deeper next Sunday, but we want to lay this out. The nature of the city of refuge is important to understand because it has spirit, a special call in the kingdom of God. In the 48 cities, Levitical cities in Israel, only six were cities of refuge. God spoke to me many years ago when I was writing my course on Judges and he said, I want to restore to the body of Christ cities of refuge. It's a special call with a special anointing, with special training. doesn't mean we're special. It means that he has called us to a ministry that's rare. Okay. Not all the priesthood is involved in city of refuge ministry. Even though the city of refuge is always a priesthood city. Always a Levitical city. Joshua apportioned the Levites to their 48 cities. Samuel's ancestors had been settled in, Ra in the Rama region. They had generations of extending mercy and proper justice. See, the whole structure of a city of refuge is structured around mercy, which I believe has yet to be fully revealed to the church. God is going to train a people in extending mercy and justice, and the administration of mercy is one of the most important things in God's economy. Micah 6 and 8, He has shown thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. In other words, the danger of being a special city of refuge is pride. The danger of being a city where people come and be healed is pride. Why? He wouldn't say we need to walk humbly in the same verse, would he? So our cry is, God, I want to remain humble. I want to humble myself because I really don't want God to humble me. That's not necessarily a pleasant experience. It's a necessary experience, but not pleasant necessarily so Lord teach me to do justly teach me what true justice is not social justice Amen. there may be social justice issues done because of being taught the justice of God but social justice as taught today by many churches is a distraction from the mercy of God and it's run by sympathy, not by mercy. Okay? So Lord, teach me to do justly. Teach me what justice is. Teach me to love, love mercy. Not get tired of extending mercy. Uh, <clears throat> and Lord, teach me how to keep myself humble before you. That's part of a Rama house. Approximate location in relationship to the other important cities. Rama was a border city between Ephraim, or fruitfulness, and Benjamin, son of the right hand. And the spiritual meanings have significance. It was a border city. It's like one you go down Main Street, one side of the street was Ephraim, the other side was Benjamin. Both of those are essential in the building of a Rama house. Okay? It was a city of ministry. Levites, or the priesthood, Samuel, the prophets, and priestly course members, therefore most likely worshippers. Because when David set up the 24 courses, they came from 
all of those 48 cities. So one of the emphasis of around the house would be worship. God is going to restore worship to a church, to the church in a dimension we have not seen yet. And has not been in any revival that's come down the pipe or any restoration. Generations of ministering to God and the people in balance. Ministry and worship. There's a level of the prophetic on worship leaders in Israel who are all Levites except David. David appointed three major prophetic worship leaders. Why? Because a prophet is to see what's going on in heaven and release it on earth. There's worship going on in heaven. Any view you see in heaven, there's worship. Thy will be done on earth. We prayed it this morning, didn't we? Do we really mean it? Is he going to come and mess up our worship services and our sex? I hope so. Because <laughs> when he comes and does that, his presence comes. Ministry in mercy in its many aspects. Remember that it was the mercy seat God spoke from, not the judgment seat. Too often the church has spoken from the judgment seat. By the way, there is not a judgment seat in the tabernacle. Honing skills in discernment and perception. The person fleeing to the city of refuge had to come before the elders of the city to have his case assessed. That was not to judge him or kick him out, but to see that he qualified. And most today, hear me, most today that are fleeing to places qualify to live there. Many of us have been wounded and but for the grace of God we wouldn't be here. Some of us are here in spite of the church. Come on. I just want to be real. I know I've said a number of times in my experience I'm here in spite of the church. I'm still in ministry in spite of the way I've been treated. Because God is faithful. His people may not be yet, but God is faithful. And His word is true regardless, as if, uh, regardless of whether we've ever seen it happen or not. I have to hope in that. Because you see, there's some things He's spoken to me and revealed to me from the word I've not seen anywhere. And I'm either way out to lunch, which is possible, or, or God has revealed to me something He wants me to pray into and to press into. Okay? Years of doing this, of assessing cases, would increase the skill of being able to really uh, read the body language to help discern between truth and lies. That means some ran to the city and didn't qualify. I don't think we're going to find a lot of those today. Aspect of the city's function. It's quite possible that, that there were designated safe houses. Today we call them halfway houses. For the fleer to temporarily reside in while they transition to live in the city until the high priest died. I believe God is going to cause us and give us the ability to set up safe houses on every level. I believe that there are those who have been pimped that God's going to bring to us. I believe that those who have been trafficked 
and in, in the sex trade and one out God's going to bring them to us Amen. and God's going to show us how to set up a safe house I believe satanic ritually abused people are going to come because they hear this is a safe house I believe ministry that has been rejected every place else because of where they've messed up are going to hear there's a safe house in Jacksonville where healing and wholeness and no pressure that's part of the city of refuge oh hear my heart this morning at least a small portion of the population was temporary Some of them are going to come because they need to be healed and then they're going to go back to the place from where they came because their inheritance is there. We've got to get used to it. We're not out to build a big place. We're out to build a safe place. The city will be organized around the principles of mercy and being a city of refuge. It's possible that there were special arrangements within its governance to facilitate ministry to refugees. Consider this. There are some senses in which it will be a city like the inn the Samaritan took the wounded one to and the, half, the wounded and half dead man to after binding up his wounds. It will be a safe place staffed by people who are safe to be around. They will not be abrasive. David declared thy gentleness, not thy truthfulness, although truth was there. Thy gentleness has made me great. David was able to pass on to others the gentleness of God to him. People who carry peace and are not abrasive. It will be a place where they know how to minister healing. Not just miracles. Healing takes longer. Okay? It will be a place of rest. Oh Lord, haste the day. (laughs) It will be a place where the expenses of the ministry may be borne by others or the expense of ministering to refugees may be borne by the city and not by the refugees. Remember, they flee without anything. So, there will need to be a ministry of clothing them, both naturally and spiritually. We could go into that extensively. But this is not only going to be a spiritual thing, it's going to be a natural thing as well. Both, again, the balance of God in these type of things. Pardon me? Yes. It will be a place where uh, God will supply for the needs of the caregivers and the ministry in that place. That's why some are feeling an attack on their finances because the enemy does not want this in this city. Okay? It should also be a place where the principles of spiritual care, caregiving, are taught to the next generation. Come on. By the way, that's one of the reasons I'm here. Okay? Because I want to build and train the people to properly care for the wounded. How does that apply to CMC? God's going to bring us to us men and women who have been wounded in battle and are infected. They've got wounds, infected wounds. They will have wounds that come from betrayal, having gone in the error, having fallen, and no one said restore. We have a Bible there for a minute. In Isaiah, if you have your Bibles, turn here, you'll want to mark it because I believe it's going to be a hallmark of the house. Isaiah 
Isaiah 42 and verse 22. These are the people that God is going to bring. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Doesn't that sound like the guy who fell among thieves and the Samaritan minister to? They are all of them snared in holes. They are hid in prison houses. Some of the prison houses are the prison house of their own mind. Some of it has been projected onto them from childhood up. But Jesus came to set the captive free. Amen. And he's going to use people to do it. Yes. And they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth, and a spoil, and none saith, Restore. This morning we are saying, Restore, Restore, Restore. Amen. And we speak that into the Spirit over Jacksonville. A ministry of restoration in the city. And we're volunteering, Lord. Or I'm volunteering. I can't speak for you. All right. But I believe God wants it to flow from this house. I really do. They will have infections of rejection, abandonment, lack of self-worth, depression, self-abuse, and condemnation, as well as abuse by others, sad to say, in the body. Some of them will be wounded by friendly fire. They will also be bruised, looking fine in presentation, but bound up by bruising. How many have ever had a bruise and it didn't show on the surface, but you limped anyway? Jesus came. In Luke it says here. Look, look at this. Bruises are not always visible. Luke 4, 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's the anointing it's going to take. That level of anointing. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to blind, and set at liberty my bruises, bind me up. Our functioning. Much of the flow of ministry in and from this house will be from the base of a city of refuge. God's going to build in us compassion and wisdom in dealing with the wounded. Here's the definition God gave me of compassion. Many of us have love, but we don't have compassion. Compassion is love with the answer. How do I get that definition? I get that definition by looking at what Jesus did when it says he was moved with compassion. Every time Jesus was moved with compassion, he produced an answer. Out of his compassion came the following answers. In Matthew 15, 32, the feeding of the 4,000, and in John 6, the feeding of the 5,000. In Matthew 20, 33 and 34, he healed the blind men. In Mark 1, 41, he healed the leper. Here's one that really struck me when I read it. In Mark 6, 34, he was moved with compassion and saw them as they were sheep, like sheep without a shepherd, and he taught them, teaching with compassion. By the way, teaching with compassion infuses in your spirit the answer, the spirit of the answer being given. It may express itself differently coming out of your life, but the spirit of it is imparted to you because of compassion. And Jude 1 and 2, let's look at that. I think the next slide, whoops. Well, let's look at these briefly. And, uh, Mark 6 and 34, teaching that came from compassion has a depth of authority that other teaching does not. The observation of Jesus' authority was that it was not like that of the scribes. There was an authenticity to it that was noticeable. 
Then you have Matthew 7, 29 and Mark 1 and 22. But here's the scripture I want us to catch and let God let it sink into us. Jude 1 and 22. And some have compassion making a difference. The challenge of God for CMC is to say yes to God's plan and purpose and press into the Spirit of God to be the, led into the dimension of having compassion. Compassion's more than love. It's love to such an extent that it will reach into the realms of the Spirit until God gives clear answers that have a practical application just as Jesus did. It comes out of knowing that God has an answer and not just letting it go until the answer has been imparted to my spirit and not letting go until the answer has been imparted into my spirit, not into my mind or my emotions, but into my spirit. And I understand how to function in giving it to those who are under my care with mercy and grace. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for CMC and how you've apprehended this gathering for your purposes. We recognize that you are the one who alone can communicate to our spirit vision. It's your grace that witnesses to our witnesses to us our portion of the vision you want us to flow in. Thank you that the vision is to work out the portion of it that witnesses to our spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, lead us into the fulfilling of all your will concerning CMC. We give you permission to lead us into its fulfillment and to change us so that we can fulfill it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, we want to give opportunity this morning for those of you who, first of all, want prayer that God would bring you into this to be ministered to, but also if you have other needs. Uh, Sister Gloria and the prayer team will be over here. Can you move this over, please? Yeah. Um, to, to pray with you. But I want to pray over you a prayer of impartation and activation first. Is that okay? Let's stand. Father, thank you again for this house a place that has a hunger for God that won't quit a people that have a hunger for God and are dissatisfied with their current condition not because what's going on here is not right but because you are calling them higher as a people as individuals and you're calling this whole gathering into a higher place we ask you to draw us Draw me and we as a corporate body, also as individuals and as a corporate body, will run after the spirit, soul, and body. Draw us, we pray, in your precious name. Amen. 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 Yes. All right. Thank you for reminding me. How many enjoyed worship this morning? Let's show him in a tangible way that we're so thankful he came and we'd like him to come back. Yeah. Yeah. So there will be a bucket here for those of you that desire to give and help. Listen, in, the, in, in, in Solomon's temple, the, the worshipers were paid so they could give themselves totally to worship. Amen? So, all right, there it is. Bless you. Thank you for coming. We have been, it's been such a blessing to minister this word this morning. Amen? Amen. God bless you.